Welcome to the Giants Huddle. Get him in the huddle, get him in the huddle, get him in the huddle. A New York Giants podcast. I'm Paul Dottino and welcome to another edition of the Giants Huddle podcast. Today's guest is Hall of Famer and Giants legendary linebacker Harry Carson. You can find the Giants Huddle podcast on Giants.com, the Giants mobile app, and also all your favorite podcast platforms. Make sure you subscribe and leave a positive review if you like what you hear. And now we welcome in Harry Carson. Harry, when you look at this this Giants rookie class, obviously led by Daniel Jones, the quarterback, who had a sensational game uh, against Tampa in his pro starting debut, what strikes you about him and about the rest of these rookies that is going to allow them to make a quick impact? Well, I think they all kind of come in here under the same circumstances. They have a coach who has, and GM, who selected them to uh, fill the void of certain players who have departed, and uh, they have the opportunity to uh, learn the game, but also apply what they've learned early on as opposed to, you know, just sort of sitting on the bench for a number of years before, you know, they, they get the call up. Uh, in terms of Daniel Jones, and I'll be a little bit more specific regarding him, looking at what he has done so far, um, I like everything that I see. And I think that um, he was definitely a very good choice for um, the giant organization, especially um, with him having the mobility to, um, you know, keep plays alive and uh, take a little pressure off of the uh, offensive line. So, you you know, I, I just think that uh, these guys who are showing up and, and, and playing, I think they're only going to get better and better. If you're the middle linebacker looking at the Giants' offense and you see the personnel that they can deploy, how would you deal with them? Well, you know, it's one thing to see, look across the, the line and see uh, Daniel Jones, but you also have to take into account who's in front of them, you know, the offensive line, you know. Who's going to be opening the holes for those guys? Who's going to be blocking? Because I got to get away from those guys first before I I can even get to the ball carrier or the quarterback. So, uh, you know, I look at what they've done with the offensive line, and uh, the offensive line I think is vastly improved. And uh, you know, you take guys from different arenas. Um, it takes players when they they're taken from one team and infuse them to another team, it always takes them a little time to sort of mesh. And I think, you know, they're at this point now where the offensive line really should be meshing very well to provide, you know, uh, protection for the quarterback, but also opening holes for for the running back. So, you know, it's not just the marquee players that you see and what they can do for, and I'm only speaking as, a middle linebacker or inside linebacker is also those guys who are opening the holes. You have to really take into account. Now, the NFL is celebrating its 100th uh, anniversary. In the first 100 years, I want to go to your 13 years in the NFL. What what play or player would you have wanted to nominate for one of the greatest moments in, in the 100 years of the NFL? And it doesn't have to have been a giant play. Wow. <laughs> Paul, you got me stumped because there are so many plays that um, I could sort of rattle off. Um, You know, you you got the fumble in 1978. Which turned into a positive. It it turned into a positive, but also a a teachable moment for all teams around the league because if you're going to, um, you know, close the game by – you know what? What are you going to do? Are you, are you going to hand the ball off to a fullback and have a quarterback fullback uh, mishap? You know, no one has done that since Zonka and and um, and, and Pisarczyk. You know, it, that's that's one of those moments that you always remember, especially me. I mean, because it was so painful. You look at you, you know, there's so much talent that has been infused into the league from you know in that first hundred years and I think we're at a point now during this time frame where the talent is just so unbelievable I mean you look at the quarterback from from Kansas City you look at you know 
Saquon. You look at the the receivers being able to catch the ball with one hand. You know, Evan Ingram, you know, he caught a ball last week with one hand, and he just made it look like, you know, just normal stuff. But to see the talent level from then to now, um, it, it really is outstanding. Is there one play that you made in your career? One play that I made? One particularly, because you made literally hundreds of thousands, I'm sure. But is there one that you remember that you made that if I said to people years and years from now, this is the kind of player Harry Carson was? Can, can you give me that play? <laughs> no. <laughs> Paul, let me tell you something. The, 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 one, the one thing that people will always remember, and it wasn't even a play on the field, it was John Madden diagramming where I was going to come from with the Gatorade bucket in Super Bowl 21. That's how people will remember me. Now, plays on the field, people remember Lawrence Taylor for the plays on the field. I didn't do any kind of spectacular stuff. My my job was to You're stop the modest. run. No, my, my job was to stop the inside run. And that's what I did. And there is no... That's that's not one of those high profile things that you normally see. I mean, if you're sacking the quarterback, that's one thing. But to stop a running back in his tracks, you know, that happens all the time. And I was pretty good at at doing it. But quite frankly, if somebody is going to remember me, they'll probably remember me more for the whole Gatorade thing. <laughs> Yeah, I'm being honest. You know, that's that's the way it is. And I, I, I had the opportunity to play with one of the greatest players uh, who ever uh, played linebacker in the National Football League, and that's Lawrence Taylor. And so when you look at Lawrence Taylor from a, a defensive perspective, Lawrence Taylor was like the Michael Jordan of linebackers. I was the Scottie Pippen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if 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 Lawrence is Michael, I'm Scotty, and so I I've always understood what my role was. I understand, I understand that um, the things that I did, you know, they're not flashy, but they were effective. You know, whether it's stopping a guy, you know, fourth and one, third and one, or whatever, or goal line, that was my job. That's what I did, and I did it to the best of my ability. I wouldn't think that there was anything. Um, really cute about that um you know but i did get parcels a, a, a few times with the gatorade buck and you know that was that was pretty neat but you know something harry you get drafted by the giants and marty schottenheimer takes you from the defensive line to becoming a middle linebacker mm -hmm. if you had gotten taken by another nfl team maybe you don't get converted to middle linebacker. Do you ever think about that yeah i i think about it and quite frankly um i'm very thankful that um, Marty really drafted me because they were in the, he, he told me the story. They were in the draft room, you know, first round pick. They used that on Troy Archer. Didn't have a second, didn't have a third. They had two fourth round picks. They used the first fourth round pick on Gordon Bell. And Marty, being a uh, linebacker coach, uh, he was given the choice of drafting any player that he wanted because they needed an inside um, run stopper, and he chose me. And when I came to the Giants, he sat me down, and he, wanted, he told me he wanted me to come back and give the middle linebacker position a try. I'd never played middle linebacker in, in my life. And so he taught me how to play middle linebacker, the basic, fundamentals of playing uh, middle linebacker. I was able to uh, learn that and um, just, you know, physically, I knew I, I could do it physically, but intellectually, that's a different story mm -hmm. because there's so much that you have to know. If you're a right defensive end, you know, you're coming down, you're making the tackle, whatever. Mike linebacker is a different animal. And then you get to a point where you're responsible for the guys in front of you making the call, making changes and so forth. And I was able to do that. What I've thought about over the years is this, and it's very significant to me. I don't go around touting it, but Willie Lanier was 
the first black middle linebacker in the National Football League. Right. Willie Lanier, Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs, but he went to Morgan State University and he had never really played Mike Linebacker until he went to the Chiefs from Morgan State University. The first black uh, middle linebacker. I was the third African-American um, middle linebacker to play in the National Football League. Harold McClinton, who played with the Washington Redskins, mm. to my knowledge, he's the second. But I was the third African-American middle linebacker to play in the National Football League. And to me, when looking back on it, I didn't think about it way back then. But it means so much to me because the middle linebacker position back during that era and before was a position that was reserved for white guys because it was a thinking man's position. And so whether it's a center, quarterback, um, middle linebacker, those were positions for white guys. They were reserved for white guys. And so uh, to be able to make that transition meant so much to me because um, I had to learn the, pos the position from scratch right. at the highest level. And then, you know, I, I, I look at what I took from South Carolina State, what was instilled in me in terms of, and we didn't have like the best equipment and all of that stuff. So when I reflect back on it, I think about how uh, I helped, helped to open the door for black guys at the Mike linebacker position because, you know, you look at Ray Lewis, you look at, you know, guys who have had an impact in playing the game over the years. And I think that Willie Lanier, Harold McClinton, myself, we sort of led the way for today's middle uh, and inside linebackers. Harry, I want to finish up by asking you about another position that you played and still play, Captain Emeritus, basically, mm -hmm. captain of a lifetime mm -hmm. for the New York football giants. Mm -hmm. I've never asked you in all the years that I've known you, and we've been friends a long time, how you got to be named captain of the Giants originally, because I know you hold that honor in very high regard. Yeah. Um, when I came to the Giants, I was 22, 23, and I was playing with guys who were 30, 32, 33, older guys, 35 years old. And so my third year, I was voted captain because the guys who I practiced with and I played with they got to see a certain side of me and they saw, you know, leadership, my leadership abilities. And so I went from my third year until the time that I retired, I was a captain. And the thing that I treasure most in regards to playing the game is I love the guys who I played with. You know, those guys were my guys. Like Parcells will say, um, you know, guys who played for him, he calls them Parcells guys. Well, the guys who I played with, I, I had a very good connection with them, and I feel very possessive with the guys who I played with, not just on the NFL level, but the guys who I played with in college, the guys who I played with in high school. I still stay in touch with those guys, and there is a bond that is there, but in regards to the question that you asked, those guys who I played with with the Giants – um, they dubbed me Phil McConkey, uh, Jim Burt, um, you know, those guys dubbed me their captain for life. And it wasn't just about what we did in the locker room, what we did on the field. It was, um, trying to be their advocate for, you know, let's say increased, time off the field doing stuff during training camp you know I was I would be the one who would go and negotiate with Parcells you know um, <laughs> good luck <laughs> and be an intermediary between you know the players and, and the coach and I was that in, intermediary but those are guys who I really cared about and, and quite frankly now I'll share this with you Paul and and I I've come to this realization that I was never really 
a football player. I have always been a guy who played football. And football was never my life. If I had not made it, I had my college degree, I could have gone on to other things. And so I played the game primarily for the guys who I dressed and got on the field with. Those were the guys who who I cared the most for. And it's interesting how, you know, Belichick feels that way. Belichick feels like, you know, that Super Bowl 21 team, Belichick has a, a, a very soft spot uh, for those guys and those coaches who coached that team. Parcells, you know, he feels the same way. It was it's it's a unique kind of bond that we all kind of share. And and so um, uh, that is something that I feel very proud of, that I'm their captain. And and, you know, when I went to the Hall of Fame, it, it really didn't mean a whole lot to me at that time, except that it gave me the opportunity to speak up on behalf of players or former players who are having problems with pensions and benefits and so forth. And, and so for me, you know, that, that's the thing that probably resonates with me and is most important in regards to my, my experience playing in the NFL that, um, you know, I'm, I feel very much well respected by all of those who I played with and against. Well, Harry, I speak for all Giants fans when they uh, they talk about you in the highest regard and highest respect. I hope you feel that as well from them. Well, thank you, Paul. I appreciate it. We thank Harry Carson for joining us on the Giants Huddle Podcast, and we appreciate you being with us on Giants.com and the Giants mobile app. And as a reminder, the show is also available on all popular podcast platforms. Make sure you subscribe or add us to your favorites list. I'm Paul Dottino. We'll see you again next time. Hey, Giants fans, Saquon Barkley here. You want to see more videos? Subscribe below.